In this video tutorial, we're going to look at selector types in CSS. Selectors are basically the mechanism or the mechanisms that allows you to select aspects of your page. Many a times, well, most of the time, these things are just tags. And so selectors allow you to select tags in your page and so that you can apply CSS styles to those tags and any text or images, of course, within the confines of the tag. So in the situation of a paragraph or a table tag, etc. So we're going to look at the basic selector types and uh, we'll take it from there. CSS has many selector types and with each new specification of CSS, there's CSS 1, 2, and 3, and so on, there are more and more interesting selector types. What I'm going to do though for this video is concentrate on the big ones, the tag selectors, class selectors, ID selectors, and I'm going to show you how to group selectors together. Tag selectors are the easiest. You basically put down the tag you want to style, you put your curly braces, and you add your various CSS rules. And that's pretty much it. If we look at the page, this is the page pre-CSS, post-CSS. No big deal. The second selector type I want to look at is the class selector. The class selector basically allows you to create a, a user-defined CSS rule. So I'll just create a name. So I'll, all classes start with the period, and I'll say, uh, I'll call it bold. So then I can go text, uh, text uh, transform, I'll go uppercase, and I'll go font style normal. And then font size of, nah, let's see which one we want. Font variant, I guess, yeah. We'll hit bold since it's called bold. So now that we have this particular class, we can apply it to any element in our page. So we could, uh, oh, let's make this one bold here. So I go here. Now I'm going to say Dreamweaver really makes this uh, easy for us. There we go. So I applied the class bold to this particular paragraph and when I refresh it's actually this item right here so it made it bold so there you go you can create as many classes as you like of course and it allows you to specify individual elements in the page to be styled in a particular way whereas with tag selectors when you select h3 or p or any other tag and you give it a property this rule will be applied to all the tags in the page. So if you say, uh, make your H3s, give them a, this background color, all your H3s will have that background color regardless of uh, what you want. But if you want to specify that particular H3s will have a certain background color, that's where you might create a class that does that. The next type of selector is the ID selector. Now, an ID is pretty much like a class, except the assumption is that there's only one element in the entire page, an element probably being a tag. There's only one thing in the entire page that's actually, that will have that ID. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, except when you want an ID, you can say you would use the hash symbol um, as your ID. So we go main title, I don't know, font size and I'm going to make it uh, 24 pixels and uh, then I'm going to say that this is the main title here I'm going to say uh, ID again Dreamweaver just makes this easy for us so I say uh, refresh style list main title there we go so even though you can actually apply this ID rule to many different items on your page so you could have ID on main title for P and this one here. The idea is in this situation with IDs you only use it for one item. 
if you want to apply a particular rule, if you want to apply font size 24 to many items, what you would be doing is creating a class and then applying that class. You're probably asking me now, what, uh, what's the point if they both do the same thing? It has a lot to do with DOM scripting later on where you would use IDs in your DOM scripting to target things and then change things. So um, it's a little loose and wild in that it's up to you to make sure that you, uh, that you do this properly, but uh, so that you know. So let's uh, refresh this page. And yeah, so here we go. So we made it uh, a font size bigger here. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's just for the sake of... Uh, there we go. Now we know how it works. The final selector type, if you will. Well, it's not a selector type. I want to look at grouping selectors. Now, if we looked up here, you saw how we have a rule for the P and a rule for the H3. There's an easier way to do this. We could group them together. So we can go, it's going to say, let's say we want everything to have this font color. So let's put that here like this. And we could go all P's, all H1's, all H2's, oops, H3's, H4's. So let's just see if we've done anything here. Yeah, so see if we've overridden this. There you go. So you see how I've applied one style rule to many different selectors, in this case, tag selectors, very easily right here. Let's change this up a little, go like this. We'll say our headings will have a color of uh, whatever 960 is. And we're gonna say it has a border, border, let's say border. And we're going to say it's thin, it's uh, blue, and it's uh, solid. And this is going to look very ugly, but yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens here. There we go. So we have our uh, our blue border. Of course, this has got the this aqua green color here. Why is that? Because it main tato? No, no. It's because of uh, yeah, yeah, it's because the H3. So we're going to change this. We'll use, you know, we'll use a little inheritance and we're going to say background color. I'm sneaking in something here. Even though up here we said that the background color for the H3 would be this uh, ugly green here. I've overridden it, even though it's in a group selector here, I've overridden it down here with uh, white and that's why that turned white i hope this makes sense and that's because of course the way the cascade works top to bottom right because this is stacked below this thing this gets processed last so it overrides anything up here as i said earlier there are different selector types that i haven't covered here in uh, css and it really comes down to the specification in that certain browsers will support. Well, when I'm talking about specification, there's like, you know, they came up with CSS and they came up with CSS2 and then CSS3. And at this point in time, there are a lot of selector types that work in certain browsers, but don't work in others. So I'm just concentrating here on the main selector types that you're going to be using probably all the time. There are some others, perhaps that will work in most browsers, but I find personally that it's rare that I use them.